it's time for Go Veggie with K. Vegetarian cooking for your good health. Now, here's Kay Stepkin. Hello, and welcome to Go Veggie with Kay. I'm Kay Stepkin, and we're here in the demonstration kitchen of Whole Foods Market in Evanston, Illinois, for a very special show, Baking with Red Hen. I have as my guest Nancy Carey. She's the founder and the co-owner of the fabulous Red Hen Bread in Wicker Park on Chicago's north side. Today, our show is all about bread, the staff of life. First, we're going to make a variation of Red Hen's multigrain twist. And lastly, we'll be using bread as the main ingredient in a delicious blueberry mango bread pudding. But that's not all. We'll also be taking a break to meet Joel Furman. He's a physician and an author who will be talking to us about information in his book, Disease Proof Your Child. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Kay. How are you? Good. Good. Thank you so much for stopping by to show me how to make my favorite bread. Sure. It's great. It's a pleasure to be here. Why don't we get started? What we're going to do is okay. we're going to get our water and put that in a pot and bring that to uh, probably a light boil real quick. Okay. And then what's going to happen is we're going to start adding our grains in. The first grain we're going to add is our um, rye flake, which is actually just like a rolled oat, except with this situation, it's an actual whole grain rye. And We're whole grain, uh, I just want to mention that as far as this no carb, low carb fad goes, these are the good carbs. Once we add the um, rolled rye grain, we're going to now add the quinoa. And the mm -hmm. yellow one is the millet, both of which are great because they're both complex carbohydrates and they're wonderful, high calcium and all that kind of stuff. So it's beautiful to use. The next we're going to add is our... Um, our oats, our cracked oats, which is a steel cut oat, um, and also known as Irish oatmeal, steel cut Irish oatmeal. The next would be our cracked wheat. And some sea salt, a little bit of sea salt. Great. At this point, we're going to just bring that to a boil, and we're going to allow that moisture to be absorbed by the grains. Um, this will help make the bread more palatable and digestible, if you will. What we're going to do is we're going to allow this to cook, and then once we're done bringing that to full absorption, we're going to allow that to sit overnight in the cooler so that that will allow it to have gr gotten all the water into the grain, and then it will be digestible, if you will. Okay, now it's starting to boil, but I keep stirring it until the water is all absorbed? Yes, I would definitely okay. stir it and keep it on like a medium heat. If it's too high, you'll just the water will just evaporate and it won't be absorbed. So you'd want to keep stirring and you want this um, product to be f pretty much dry, like an oatmeal. Okay. Not dry, but oatmeal. Hi, okay, so we're back um, after allowing our grains to soak overnight. Um, Did you soak them on the counter or in the refrigerator? In the refrigerator. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's best to do it in the refrigerator. What we're going to do now is we're going to take our water and bring it to 110 degrees. I would recommend doing it in the microwave um, or in a pan, um, which is just above body temperature. Mm -hmm. So the be I would measure it after you warm it in a pan as well, just in case there was any evaporation, so you're not short water. At this point, we're going to put it in the bowl, and we're going to include in that our yeast. And I'm, I'm using a, um, a dry active yeast, which is the yeast you most commonly get at the store in the envelopes. This is actually a living organism, and it, um, it's going to feed on the sugar that Nancy's going to put in. Next, we're going to put the maple syrup in. And we're using pure maple syrup mm -hmm. instead of, you know, like the pancake syrup, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And now what's going to happen is once we let this sit for 10 minutes, we'll see some activity, and then we'll start mixing our final product. What do you mean by activity? The yeast will start um, metabolizing the sugar. Okay. Okay. Does and it, it will look become different? Active. It will become bubbly. Okay. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, so we can start um, incorporating the other ingredients in. First, we're going to mix up our um, liquid and make sure that it's ready to go, which it is. We're going to add our um, soaked grains that we've pulled out from the cooler. You can just add those in. And essentially, we're adding all the rest of the ingredients. The next ingredients are our dry, it's our uh, bread flour, unbleached bread flour, and our whole wheat flour. And once we've added this in, we'll, we'll ne the next thing we'll add is our flax meal. Oh, and uh, I might mention the reason that we ground the flax into meal is because that's the only way that your body can really use all those omega-3s 
in it. Great. Then we're going to add our sea salt as well. Okay. Now at this point, we're going to put it on the mixer. We're going to use a hook as opposed to the paddle, and um, this will allow us to um, create the gluten that we're looking for, the structure, if you will, to hold in the fermentation. Uh -huh. So we're going to put on the mixer now. We're going to mix on first speed for a total of three minutes. And then we're going to tr switch to fourth speed and do another three minutes. So that'll to give develop us the gluten. Correct. That'll give us the gluten development we're looking for. I've read that when you knead bread by hand, and that's how I'm used to making bread, that what you're doing is pushing the pieces of gluten against each other, and when they touch like that, they stick together, and that's what forms a framework within the bread, and then the carbon dioxide will rise up. Within, it won't be able, not too much of it will be able to escape if you make a tight framework of gluten. That's exact. Um, the protein creates the gluten and then it creates the fishnet, which is how we contain the carbon dioxide and then you get your fermentation. Okay, I'm now going to turn the mixer up to speed four and I'm going to let that mix for another three minutes. Do you start the dough on speed one so that the flour doesn't fly all over the place? No, I actually do a speed one so that I can allow the protein to hydrate and create that gluten that Oh, we I didn't know that. About. Okay, we're finished mixing the dough, so we're going to take this off of the mixer, and now we're going to allow the dough to ferment. Okay? Okay. Okay, it's been about three hours. Um, this is our dough after it's risen, and I wanted to just kind of show you so you can, um, in the future, know what it looks like. When you're looking um, for a properly risen dough, you can insert your finger, and it stays. It holds that. If it's not properly risen, it will pop back up. The dough oh. will release. It's beautiful, really, and you can see the gluten strands in there. Exactly. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little flour and put that on the table, and now I'm going to release the dough onto the table. You can really see the rising going on now at this point with mm -hmm. this uh, dough. I'd like to cut half of it for you so that you can do your own and I'm going to do my own. You, you gave go. me the bigger half. <laughs> All right, so at this point what we're going to do is we're going to create not a traditional loaf but we're going to do twists. And the twists um, have a little bit different shaping. So we're not going to bake it in a traditional loaf pan. We're going to actually do it more like a dinner uh, roll size. Uh -huh. uh, but we bake it together so it appears to be a loaf. So right now, again, I'm going to use just a little bit more flour so it doesn't stick. What I'm looking for is a rectangle. And what we're going to do is a business letter fold. Now when you do the rectangle, you're just kind of moving it out. Not a lot of smearing going on, but more like just um, kind of dimpling it, if you will. I'm going to add some sesame seeds and some sunflower seeds. And then I'm going to do a business letter fold, as I had said, which is much like you're sending out a resume, how you would fold that. Oh, okay. I wondered what you meant by that. And now at this point, the dough's, the dough's a little sticky, but that's good because we need that stickiness for that, the grains to absorb the moisture. So don't be afraid of it if they're it's a little sticky. They're still absorbing moisture. Exactly. Uh -huh. and even through the bake, they're going to absorb the moisture. Okay. Now at this point, if you don't have a bench scraper, you can use a, a traditional knife or what have you. But we're going to cut these at about the one inch mark. Now, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to twist these and place them on the pan. So I turn like this and I place them flat. Now I'm going to place the next one right next to it. Okay. Give it a little teeny bit of room. But to, what that's doing is, yeah, each other. when it proofs or it rises the second time, it will create a loaf, but you can still pull it apart. Almost like pull apart rolls. Oh, what fun. Okay. Can you roll them in more seeds if you sure, want? Sure, yeah. Maybe, that maybe makes, I'll do that when I do my yeah. half. It looks really nice when you roll them. Because uh -huh. I, I think I saw it that way in your store. And that's it. So do you want to give it a try? Yeah. Okay. But just, okay. I'm going to use the whole wheat okay. instead of the unbleached flour to keep up my reputation. So there. And uh, do I turn it over and put the sticky side on the bottom what, where the it flour is? It doesn't matter. Either way. Okay. I would say keep the sticky side up. Okay, so I'll put this on my hand so they don't stick too much, and then just, oh, dimple it, you said. Mm -hmm. We're just okay. looking for a rough rectangle. Now, this, Some, this looks a little bigger than the one that you did. Uh-huh, so okay. I would go maybe a little bit wider. A little wider. Okay. 
Oh, now it's getting a little easier to work. And make it all the same uh, height or? Exactly. Okay. Just tell me when. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. Now, now, now can, the business. Well, first you've got to add your seeds. Oh, the seeds, right. Okay. So, sesame seeds. Oh, I read something very interesting. Um, a distinguishing feature of sesame seeds is that um, they grow in a big seed pod, and when it reaches maturity, it actually bursts open, and that's where we got the famous phrase, or, or that's where Arabian Nights got the famous phrase, open sesame. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. And sunflower seeds. I'll Oh, yeah, and I see you're more. using natural. It's not bleached. Uh, no, it, 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 it's a whole sesame seed with right. a hole still on it. And uh, they don't spoil as fast. They've got a lot more fiber. And I've used them all, so that's that. Great. Now, at this point, right. you're going to turn now I the do top the letter. down. As if you're writing a business letter. Yep. About a third. Exactly. Press. Sure. And then the bottom up all the way to the top. All the way to the top. Press. It looks awful big now. Should if it's I a little try? big, you can extend it just a little bit with your hands. Like that? Yeah, that okay. works. Dimple. It's great. It looks really nice. Nice and consistent. And that's, uh, is that okay? Great. All right. So about an inch, you said. I never w could have dreamt this up. Where'd you where'd you come up with this recipe? Well, actually, the style it. of twist I uh -huh. learned from working at Amy's Breads in New York. Oh, she does twists, and that's how we uh, made all of our twists for the uh -huh. restaurants there. I have just never seen or heard of this, and I love it. So I just take it now and twist, twist it. it and put it on the pan. That's a little. It's a little long. It's a little long. I'll push it in. Twist, push, and leave a little space between them. Oh, God. Mine's going to be misshapen, but it'll taste just as good. Yeah, it'll be beautiful. <laughs> Rustic. Okay. <laughs> I think I need a little practice. No, it looks great. Now these, after we shape these, we have to allow them to um, rise again. And what we're going to look for is another, it's probably going to be about another hour, hour and a half. For it to rise? Yep. And what we're going to look for. How do you know? For, how will you know when it's risen enough? It's going to um, feel like a balloon that's just starting to lose its oxygen. If oh, you know okay. what I mean. It's, it's kind of start to soft. And really at this point what we're going to look for is volume versus in our first stage when we did the rising, we were really looking for flavor development. Mm-hmm. So this, the next point is going to be the, uh, what they call proofing, and that will be an hour and a half, and then we'll bake the product. Okay. Well, everyone will know which is mine and which is Nancy's. <laughs> Looks great. Yeah. Oh, I got to tell you, the first time I ever made bread, I learned how to make bread from Adele Davis's cookbook. Uh, I think it's called Let's Cook It Right. And she mentioned to cover, I made my first loaves of bread, and she mentioned to cover, cover them with a towel. And then her next instructions were, after the bread has risen, put it in a preheated 350 oven. She never said, remove the towel. So I put the loaves of bread with the towel in the oven, and I knew my first bread was ready when I could smell the towel burning. Right, that's great. I love it. <laughs> so we will cover this with a towel. That's a and, good idea. And remove it. <laughs> yes, let's remove it before we bake it off yeah. today. Okay, it's been about an hour and a half now, and I just wanted to kind of indicate to you how you can tell when a product is properly risen mm -hmm. for the second time. So at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to kind of indent with your finger, and as you can see, it doesn't come back again. And it's a lot like a balloon just losing the oxygen, like we indicated earlier. So if it had risen any more, it would start to collapse. Exactly. Uh -huh. It starts to weaken. Now, also, we failed to mention that this we're, we have this on parchment paper as opposed to using pan spray or something along those lines. And this is actually unbleached parchment paper. Parchment paper is used all over um, in all the commercial kitchens. And now it's readily available at all the grocery stores in rolls. Um, so it's great for releasing product and not using all the spray and aerosol and that kind of thing. Uh -huh. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure our oven is preheated to 375, and we're going to bake that off for about about 35-40 minutes. I love bread. 
In fact, my car license plate is B-R-E-A-D. Nance, I think our twists ought to be ready. I think you're right. Let's check it out. All right. Smell good. It looks good, too. Great. As you can see, the color, we've got some nice caramelization, nice golden tones. So you can always go longer in the oven, and then you'll get it a little bit more darker if you like that. Uh-huh. Last Thanksgiving, Red Hen Bread donated these twists to Go Veggie's Thanksgiving Banquet. Everybody just loved them. So thanks for that, Nancy. It was a pleasure. And thanks for this. Great. I promise you we'd be hearing from Dr. Joel Furman. I had the great pleasure to be able to interview him. He is a great advocate for vegetarianism. Dr. Furman, I just finished reading your book, Disease Proof Your Child. Could you tell us the main message of your book? It had some fascinating information. The main message of Disease Proof Your Child is that we have a child we bring into this world. We love our child so we love our children so much. We look into their eyes. We would do anything for them as parents. We tell them to wear their seat belts. We brush, have them brush their teeth at night. But what if parents knew that the diet they were feeding their child in those first five to ten years of life would set them up for either a healthy future free of cancer, free of autoimmune diseases, or it would create cancer like ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, or colon cancer in their child's future. Wouldn't that parent want to know what foods fuel this cancer epidemic if eaten as children? And what foods could offer dramatic amounts of protection if their child ate when they were young? And wouldn't they want to set into their household a way of eating that would assure that child had a, a disease-proof future? Now, what if you could show that parent that eating so healthfully could taste great, the kids would love it, and it would protect the adults against heart disease and getting dementia, and the whole family would be so much better off? I personally think that, the, that our society can make a major shift and we can have some major artillery to fight this war on cancer. And that's what Disease Proof Your Child is all about. How would you recommend that a parent get his or her children off of junk food? When I speak to children's groups and to schools, they say, how do you get my parents to eat healthy foods? They understand this. They want to be healthy. So, and then you, so the third thing is, so number one, you have to um, have your body, have, ac the, have access to the healthy food in the house. Number two, the, f the whole family has to make the change, not the kid. And number three, you have to learn the recipes, the skills, how to make healthy food taste great so it can compete fairly close to the flavor of the other foods the kids are used to. When you do all three of those things, kids will jump at the opportunity to be healthy. We're not going to beat these diseases and have tragedy and stop these tragedies from occurring and stop the double-digit rise in medical care costs and stop the diminishing of our health of our nation, the obesity and the diabetes epidemic, until people start to rethink the way we eat in America today. My thanks to Dr. Furman for his important information and his wonderful support for Go Veggie. We're going to be making our bread pudding now, uh, of course, with whole grain bread that I've already prepared. You should be using uh, day-old bread. Um, if your bread is too soft, I would put it in a 350-degree oven for five minutes or 10 minutes, check it, and just make sure it's a little bit dried out. Um, the reason you use day-old bread, perhaps, is because bread pudding was actually born in the 13th century. It was known as poor man's pudding, and it was created as a way to save stale bread. But, of course, it's a very upscale and delicious dish today. Uh, I took a pound of tofu that I've already prepared, mixed it with water. It's in the blender. I'm going to add maple syrup, some cinnamon, sea salt, and vanilla. Just going to pulse this for a few seconds. We're actually making a custard without eggs, without milk. Um, it, it's, it tastes amazingly rich. I'm going to pour, I'm going to reserve a cup of this custard that we'll pour on top. And the rest of it right over the bread cubes. I'm going to mix it up. And then we will stir in fresh mango, blueberries. I'm going to stir those blueberries in. Fresh mango. 
and lemon zest. Now there's a lot of health claims made for blueberries, especially the wild species. Uh, they say they reduce the risk of some cancers, blueberries can prevent urinary tract infections, they help lower cholesterol, they can improve nighttime vision. That's the base of our bread pudding that I'm going to put into the sprayed glass pan. Now this pudding can actually taste different depending on the bread you use. I used a simple whole grain whole wheat bread. If you use a multi-grain bread, the pudding might be a little crunchy, maybe from millet in it. Um, different breads will give it a slightly different texture, a slightly different taste and flavor. I'm going to get all that custard in there and press it down. You can see how beautiful this is already. I am going to whisk a little bit of cornstarch into that cup of soy milk that I reserved. And because cornstarch tends to bland things out, I'm going to add a little more maple syrup to be sure that this custard tastes good. Healthy eating should extend to the bread that you eat and the sweets that you enjoy. And uh, we want to show you how to incorporate healthful eating into every part of your diet. I'm going to pour the custard over the top. I'm going to cover the pudding with parchment paper to keep it from browning too much. We're going to bake this for 20 minutes. At the end of 20 minutes, I'm going to pull it out, sprinkle a little cinnamon on the top, and bake it for five minutes more. Here is our wonderful bread pudding. I removed the parchment. It's cut and ready to serve. We hope that you'll try some of the recipes, and wherever you are in your journey toward eating for health, that you'll enjoy your increased energy and well-being as you go healthy, go veggie. Until next time, I'm Kay Stepkin.